Bevanitos Freight fans, welcome to the Horror Show coverage here at Mad Monster Arizona 2017. And I am humbled and honored to be speaking with a Horror Hall of Famer, a true legend, Mr. John Russo. How are you, sir? I'm very good. I'm happy to be here, having a lot of fun and meeting all the fans. And now I get to be interviewed by you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a pleasure, sir. And obviously, you have an extensive background, the most notable being uh, co-scripter, you even acted in the film a little bit in the original Night of the Living Dead film, which is about as iconic as it gets as far as, uh, well, the, the current zombie craze that everybody seems to be <laughs> just so, so caught up in. Uh, so as far as the, the enduring appeal of the film and also the fact that it was, a, it was an independently made film, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we put up the money ourselves to get it started. Sold a little bit of stock after that, ran up our lab bills and our supplier bills, did any, everything we could to finish the movie. Later on, uh, Sam Raimi did the same thing with Evil Dead. Spike Lee came along. And they all started to learn from us. So we kind of started the whole uh, mini uh, independent film movement. Yes, very, very groundbreaking in a lot of ways. And also the fact that, I mean, it was the late 60s. You had an African-American lead. I mean, there was a lot of really just daring choices you made in that film, especially with the ending. Yeah, well, that was my idea that I came into to the office one day and I said, you know, Pennsylvania is a big deer hunting state. And every year, three or four hundred thousand deer are killed and 10 or 12 drunk hunters. And so... Uh, a person looks a lot like a zombie, whether he's a zombie or not. And wouldn't it be ironic if our if our lead guy was shot by accident? So so that's what I did. I wrote it into the script. Yeah, it was a terrific twist. It was one that really left a lasting impression in you know in me as a viewer, and obviously generations generations to come. Now I know that you and George went separate ways after that film, and we're not going to really delve into that. But um, I have to ask what your thoughts are on. I know Tom Savini is a longtime friend and collaborator of yours. Um, in this era where Hollywood seems to want to be remaking everything, what were your thoughts on Tom's work on that on that remake with a bigger budget well, and whatnot to work with? I actually. I think if, if that movie had come out first, it would have been a big hit, too. And actually, we were number the number five film in the nation when it came out, but it happened to be a very hot Labor Day weekend where people weren't going to the movie. So even the number one movie that, that, that time didn't do a whole ton of business. The other thing about it was that Columbia Pictures, uh, they thought that the that Night of the Living Dead had such a name recognition with audiences that they didn't need to advertise it. Oh. So in the in the markets where they did advertise, it was doing eight thousand dollars a screen. In the market areas where they dropped the advertising, it dropped to fifteen hundred a screen. Oh. But still, you know, it sold millions of dollars worth of cassettes, and it was a success overall. But yeah. but could have been an even bigger success, I think. Yeah, I think that's one that's really found its audience as the years have gone on. And I thought Tony Todd was terrific in Tony it. Todd is terrific and a very nice guy. And of course, I see him at a lot of conventions. The other a couple of weeks ago, he asked me for about the, <laughs> he, he wanted to get the stills. I shot about a thousand stills during the making of the movie. And he wanted you helped to, produce he wanted it, to, right? Yeah. yeah. He wanted to get the stills of him and George and so on. Mm. And so I sent them to him again. And he finally got them. Ah, excellent. Yeah. Well, there, there you go, Tony. You, you finally got to check them out properly. Um, so I also want to ask you about the return of the Living Dead film, because I know it is drastically different from the novel that it, it, it was very loosely based on of yours. Did you find an appreciation for that film, or did they just well, alter love, the tone so the, much well, that... I love the... The thing is, I was supposed to direct the film originally, and it's straight horror, the script that we wrote. Yeah. Russ Streiner and uh, Rudy Ritchie and I wrote the script. And uh, so, and at one point, Frank Sinatra was going to finance it for three million bucks. No I, kidding, I was, wow. <laughs> I had good friends in the Sinatra organization. Mm. I went out to Las Vegas to meet with him and his attorney and so on. Met with the attorney and some other, everything's going fine. And uh, until his mother's plane went down in the mountains, oh, wow. she was on her way there and she mm. was killed. So then the deal went south. So we sold the property 
Now Ryan and Hemdale eventually picked it up, said that straight horror is dead, we just mm -hmm. gotta turn it into a horror comedy. So Dan did that, then I novelized his script. Oh, I'm so now there are two different scripts, yeah. two different novels. <laughs> and, but I but I love the job they did. Yeah. Anybody out there that loves that movie ought to see the documentary More Brains. It's great. More Brains. Interesting. More brains. Seek that out. <laughs> it's one of the best movie documentaries ever, and it shows the hard work and the talent of that cast and crew. Excellent. Excellent. Now, the, the, the property is obviously one that you've returned to many times, but I actually was recently uh, reading some of the comic book work that you did with Avatar Press, yeah. and uh, those are some very graphic and uh, grisly comic books and, and you wrote uh, yeah. and, or, or like had collaborated with another writer on those or Not how did that really. process come first, about? Uh, I wrote most of the comic book stories. The, fir the first, uh, what they did was took my screenplay Escape of the Living Dead and made it into a five part comic and ah. it made the top ten nationally of mm. horror films and it spawned two graphic novels and a bunch of sequels. Then mm. Avatar started without my permission. Oh no. Getting <laughs> other people to write stories and so mm. I'm very kind of pissed off at them at this oh, point. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. <laughs> and, uh, and that's the usual, you know, mm. one of the usual rip offs that happened yeah. in this business. So now let them hear this let them hear that and try to get back to me about it. We'll yeah, Avatar, what, you guys we'll uh, have happens. some explaining to do, I would say that. <laughs> Uh, another thing I wanted to inquire your opinion about is uh, when you did a film called Midnight in uh, the, the early 80s, uh, it was considered one of those video nasties in the UK, and I believe it was banned, if I'm not mistaken. Do you think uh, they were just being a little too up in arms about stuff? or yeah, I, don't, I don't really know if, about it being banned over there, but I made that film. The funny thing is we were getting cheated out of all the money for... Uh, or most of the money for the Night of the Living Dead. So mm. George and I both had to do our next several films for very low budgets again, mm. you know. Now Midnight I made for 70,000 wow. bucks. And that was paying everybody, a New York mix, 35 millimeter prints, everything. I killed myself making that movie. And it's, it's become a cult favorite. We're on the verge of remaking it on a much bigger budget. That was my next question, actually. You yeah. beat me to it. <laughs> I think it's, uh, we, we've got a commitment for the financing. If it all goes through, then we're supposed to start shooting this summer. Exciting. Awesome. And I've already written a script. People love the script. Mm. So, and, and, and then I didn't change the story. Mm. The story itself has the same sweep, the same plot. All the things that work, but so with the girl hitchhiking able, and uh, the deranged that, cops and it, that, and but it, uh, it, I can with the budget with the budget we're going to have this time, I can do some of the things I wanted to do originally, but couldn't afford. It. I have to direct everybody to your website because of the fact that it is very comprehensive. His novels, the comics that he's been associated with, films, all kinds of various projects you've had your hand in, and I was really, really Im impressed with uh, how much there was to soak up in <laughs> over well, on Thanks there. for taking a look at yeah. it, JohnRussoEntertainment.com. You can actually see the Epix commercial, and you can see the first trailer that we did. I wrote the song "Beat 'Em or Burn 'Em." Really? Huh. And uh, that's what we cut the trailer to, and we got 65,000 views in the first five days it's a pretty good trailer that that's trending very well mm -hmm. super cool and a great cast too yeah. and my co-director rob lucas just went by oh excellent excellent on uncle john well we will wrap it up then and with my final question being what is a zombie movie that you didn't have anything to do with where you think they did a pretty good job and it was one that actually impressed you the evil dead Mm, because back to that. I, yeah. when I saw that movie, I, and Sam Raimi was unknown then, <laughs> uh, but I thought this guy really has some talent. He's really come up with some great ideas. Uh, you know, we had the we had the ghoul bitten kid in the basement. Yeah. Sam maybe was inspired by that to create the ghoul that was under the trap door with yep. the chain just loose enough that you didn't know when that thing was going to get out. Mm. And those kinds of things are what help build suspense and keep the audience Definitely. intrigued. So the whole yeah. pace of it, the whole style of it, I knew that Sam was a guy with some great talent. Yeah. In non-zombie films, I finally saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre when... The original? When I, yeah, yeah, when I was on... on uh, Toby Hooper got in touch with me and wanted to work together on some things, and I was heading to L.A. to meet with him. 
So I watched, uh, and plus I interviewed him for one of my movie making books. Mm. So that's when I watched uh, Texas Chainsaw for the first time and again. And then Toby showed me at his house some of his student films. And mm. I, I said to him, I said, you know, you can, anybody can see from just your student work that you're a guy that had the talent to, mm -hmm. to make it in this business. And we're still friends to this day, but I don't see him very often. Mm. We're well, still friends. Excellent, excellent. Well, I'd say that your creativity has influenced a lot of people from Sam Raimi to, you know, various generations to come, and it will continue to. It's a lasting legacy, and it's going to endure. So thank you so very much for taking the chance much. to speak with us, Mr. Thank Russo. It's much. greatly appreciated. Gracias. So once again, Fright fans, we're going to have much more exciting coverage coming here at Mad Monster Arizona. Check them out at madmonster.com. And this is one of the best horror conventions in the country. Mm. And so if you haven't been here, you need to you need to come to a Mad Monster show. There you go. You heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Pennsylvania native, Mr. John Russo, thank you so very much once again, sir. And until next time, scarific peeps, remember, stay scared. So how awesome was that interview, you guys? It's not that often that you get to talk to an alumni from one of the greatest horror movies of all time, Night of the Living Dead. If you want to see more from them, you go ahead and click on the link at the end of this episode in the last 20 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and post a link to the full panel discussion and Q&A that they did at Mad Monster Arizona with everyone that they had from Night of the Living Dead so you can get a full 45 to 50 more minutes of them telling awesome stories and letting you know about one of the best zombie movies ever created. So make sure you go over there and do that. That's on the Mad Monster channel. While you're there at youtube.com slash madmonster, make sure you are subscribing to that channel as well because Mad Monster's got a whole bunch of awesome horror content coming your way in the very near future on that channel and you do not want to miss out on it. So thanks for doing that. Thanks for watching this interview. And until next time, remember, stay scared.